What is up guys? Today we're doing another do-it-yourself video. I'm really excited. It's been a long time since we've done a video like this. So yeah, let's get on to it. Basically, what we're doing today is we're making a PVC snorkel for the Forerunner. And I know that sounds kind of ghetto and like kind of bad, but I'm gonna do my best to make this as professional as possible and as sealed as possible. So yeah, this whole project cost me less than $40 and that's cheaper than any snorkel I've seen you can buy, even cheaper than a snorkel you can get off eBay, like a uh, generic one. It's gonna be pretty simple. The hardest part is gonna be actually getting into the engine bay where the air box is, but I'll show you guys how we're gonna do that. So there is several different ways you can do this. And when I say I'm doing this for $40, I'm not including the price of the tools. We'll just assume that you already have those. Tools don't count. $40 just means $40 in supplies. Basically what we got here, we got two PVC pipe, and they're both three inches in diameter. I'm not sure what size, I'll show you real quick. I'm not sure what size the air box is. This is the air box on the Forerunner, and I don't know if you guys can see there, but that's the opening for it. It goes out into the wheel well. I'm not sure where that goes to. I'm gonna have to take that off. But the plan is cut a hole three inches in diameter right here, and then put that in there. And that right there is the hardest part. So that's like the hardest part of the build. And I'm hoping that this is three inches. Probably shouldn't measure that. But yeah, let's do it. I got the PVC right there. Uh, we got Gorilla Glue to seal it. Now there's other ways to seal it. You can use actual PVC sealant. Uh, I just went with Gorilla Glue because it's cheaper. Uh, I picked this up for like five bucks, I believe. I'm gonna aim to make it as waterproof as possible, but I understand that there may be some small spots. But honestly, guys, it's really not gonna. Like, it's not gonna make any difference unless I'm literally like have 75% of the truck submerged in water, and I don't plan on doing that. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because whenever I've gone off-roading, there's been times when I've been going through puddles and whatnot, and the water would come up far enough to actually get in the intake, and I've had water get into the engine, and not hydro lock it, but you could tell it was bogging down because it had water in there, and that's not good. So that's why I'm doing this. So I got two little, I guess, L brackets, 90 degree brackets right here. These will be used to actually keep the piping sturdy to keep it mounted. This is a big part of it. This just goes onto the drill and you use that to drill a hole into the fender and we'll definitely need that. So, all right. I may have to go back to Home Depot because this, well, this piece will work. I guess you could say it's both a fe like it uh, has two female ends to it. This is like one male and one female end. So um, obviously this side slides on just fine. This side kind of, you know, as an issue. I don't know how I'm gonna go about that yet. We'll figure that out down the road later. First step is to get that hole drilled. Okay, so right now I'm in the process of taking the air box off. First step was to take this bolt out, the 12 millimeter, and I took the air filter out. And then I also unclamped the mass airflow sensor. And then next, it looks like there's two bolts right here. And of course, it's a 10 millimeter, and you know where all the 10 millimeters go. I, I don't think I don't think really anybody knows the truth of where 10 millimeters wander off to. If they did, they'd be a billionaire. Cause I swear, they grow legs and they fucking walk away. Because you cannot find a 10 millimeter when you need it. Finally got one, not even joking. It took me 20 minutes to find it. All right, there's also one right down here, and that one's a 12 millimeter. Go and take that one out. Got that 12 millimeter out. Now there's gonna be a 12 millimeter right here. And that should, keyword, should be the last one. All right, air box is out. I took this little piece out. That's where the air box connected to. So we don't really need this. It was just two bolts and it came right out. It's actually really easy. So this is the hole we're gonna be using. And hopefully it fits. See, it's probably gonna fit this end, right? Now it fits that end. Not so much that end, so. So we're ready to drill. So I want to get this obviously as in the center as possible. And it's kind of hard to do, just you know, being in the situation that it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the drill and I'm gonna basically drill inside the engine compartment going outwards. And it's gonna make a little tiny hole or an indention, and then that I can use that as kind of like a pilot hole. I can line that up to my hole saw over there. So it's kind of hard to do while holding the camera, so I'm going to try to prop the camera up. Now, I know this is going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. I don't want to stab myself. 
But yeah. So I'm just gonna get it as in the middle as possible and just go for it. If it, if it wasn't locked, that'd be nice. Okay. So as you guys can see, I got a little pilot hole right there. That's what we're gonna drill into with the hole saw. It looks pretty in the center. Kinda. It's good enough. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's better than just, all right, fuck it. I think I'm gonna go right there or right here and then just fuck it all up. So let's do it. The whole dozer, it sounds so stupid. Whole dozer is on. <laughs> I don't feel cool saying that, but yeah. So a little pilot drill bit's gonna go on in that hole. And then again, I'm gonna drill as straight as possible. So yeah. It honestly turned out pretty good. Like, yeah, that turned out really good actually. Now the issue is I don't know if the PVC is gonna fit. I think this end will, and I was wrong. We just ran to Home Depot to exchange a couple of the couplers for some better ones. So we got everything we need now to do it right. Hopefully. This yeah. is not. Mm. It's, it, it's gonna be better once you see how it turns out. It's gonna so. be Gorilla Glued and it's. Oh uh, yeah, so Zach pointed out a good part. There, uh, There is designated PVC glue. I decided not to get that because that was $5 extra. It's like fucking $3. No, it's five dollars extra. I saw, I saw it's, it. It's like $3. No, it was it was ten dollars. No, it wasn't. Well, I saw like a good sized can of it. So, $10. anyways, it doesn't matter. Gorilla glue should work just as well. But if you're gonna do it properly, yeah, use PVC. If you're doing it proper, you're not using fucking PVC in the first place. Let's be honest. Yeah, so this is not proper. Yeah. Let me reset. How are you even gonna tell if it's gonna work or not? That's it. Mm. That'll be fine. <laughs> Get it all done. We'll, we'll have to test it in South Padre. We get so. it done and it doesn't even fucking work. <laughs> well, you take the fender off. There's no there's no need to take the fender off. This is gonna be going through the hole. Well We're how gonna... the hell are you gonna glue the inside of the fender well with, with that? It's shoes? not being glued inside the fender well. The air box comes out and we're gluing it inside the air box. Okay, well how are you gonna glue inside the air box through the fender well? This I don't, I forgot how big it is. This is either going on the inside of the air box or the outside. The the air box has a little piece of plastic pipe that comes off. We're gonna use that. The air box comes out. I got just watch. Just watch. Okay, well here's your new shifter. Oh that doesn't hold on. I got you. Alright, so it's slowly starting to come together. We're gonna put this end like that in there. That way it fits through both holes. And then this is going to attach right here. And and then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this piece in there with uh, Gorilla Glue and let that sit for a little bit. All right, so we got that glued up. I'm just gonna put that in there. I don't think it really matters. Damn. It really matters the angle. That's sad. That is a horrible cut. Yeah, so we forgot to get the saw, like the hand saw. So Zach had the bright idea of using that, the whole saw to cut it through. Well, why don't you? It doesn't need to be flush, let's be honest. Could, you could have, could have trimmed it up a little bit. Huh? Could have trimmed it up a little bit. Here, you do it, bitch. Okay. I'm busy. Should be using the purple stuff. <laughs> tap, tap, tap a room. That glue should should go in that crack a little bit. It's, it's, it's pretty tight. It's a pretty tight fit, but... Alright, so after two trips to Home Depot, we still were missing one piece. So I decided to call tonight and come back in the morning. So... Went back to Home Depot, got another 90, that's the right size, and this part's done. We got that glued in there, like that, and uh, we got a coupler right there. It's all Gorilla glued, sealed for the most part. I made a little bracket to go from the fender to the pipe. That right there could use some glue, probably work on that. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Kind of funny, I like it. <laughs> I got it all glued together and I'm just gonna plastic dip it, it's just black plastic dip. Um, I'm not too worried about overspray because one, this paint's really shitty, it's not even really paint, it's like, like bed liner. And two, it's already black, so why not? I really don't care that much. The plastic dip, you kinda wanna do layers of it. 
So I kind of got the first crude layer down on this end. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that end. And by the time I'm done with this, I can go back to that and then just go back and forth. Then maybe wait a couple minutes between each of them. So now if you use spray paint, definitely watch out for overspray. All right, so it's pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead a little bit later and add some extra layers of paint, but this is pretty much the finished product. I might also add another support, another clip, whatever the hell you wanna call it, another 90 degree piece to the fender, depending on how sturdy it is on the highway. But there you guys have it. There's the cheap do-it-yourself snorkel. It looks kind of cool. Just having white PVC pipe kind of looks like an eyesore. But this honestly does not look that bad. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the like button and also comment below what you think about it because eh, I don't think it's that bad. And if you guys want to see more videos like these, be sure to tell us below. So that's all we got for you guys today. Uh, the good news is I'm trying my best to start doing daily uploads for the next two weeks. We're going to South Padre. That should be pretty fun. So we're going to be taking the full runner on the beach. That's going to be fun as hell. I've been looking up videos all night on how to get yourself out of sand without a winch. So I'm, I'm ready. I know Zach's on take this bike now because he realized an eight hour drive is a long ass way. Have a great day. We'll see y'all hopefully tomorrow. Peace out.